Wow, let somebody shout hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord grace you. May the presence of the Lord overshadow you to give you your miracles in the name of Jesus. You know, we have been waiting upon the Lord for a while, praying for days now. Believe in the Lord Jehovah that in this season you will be outstanding in the name of Jesus. The Lord had given us a word in this season in our local church. And the Lord said, it's our month of renewed strength. It is our month of renewed strength. And the anchor scripture that we have is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. And I read, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will swell high on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. And that's what I want to discuss with us on this topic, the strength of a lion and the speed of an eagle. Shall we pray together? Father, we ask this day that your presence will be with us. As we look into your word, Jehovah, open our eyes. Open our ears, open up our understanding. Touch our spirit man, illuminate us in our inner man. That Lord, you send forth your word to heal, to deliver, and to save. And this day we agree together under the unction of the Holy One of Israel that your word will profit us. Your word will do us good. Your word will heal us and your word will direct us. So shall it be in Jesus' name we pray. And the people said, Amen and Amen. While I was waiting upon the Lord, I discovered a strange scripture in the Bible, in the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 1. And I will read to you from verses 23 to 27. It was after the death of King Saul and his son Jonathan that David made a lamentation for them. So many lessons to learn from the life of David, the boy that slew the mighty Goliath by the Spirit of the Lord. And can I say this? Every Goliath, whatsoever represented Goliath in your life and destiny, in your health, in your wealth, in your life, in your career, that Goliath will fall down in the mighty name of Jesus. Now look at the word, 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 23. David was lamenting and declared, How beloved and gracious were Saul and Jonathan. They were together in life. They were together in death. They were swifter than eagles. Underline that word. To be swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. After the death of these two warriors, David made a lamentation and declared that they were swifter than eagles. You know that great bird called the eagle. Do you want to talk about speed? Do you want to talk about the highs? Do you want to talk about focus? Do you want to talk about tenacity, ruggedness, and daring? Every time there's a storm, the trees will bow. The deaths will fly. Even human beings will hide. But guess what a nigga will do? Eagle is always going for the high of the storm. The eagle will get there, cooperate with the storm, and then the storm will pick the eagle up to the highest level. I will talk about the lion very soon. When the Bible says the lion, the king of all animals. 
And yet David compared the, these two great warriors. said they were swifter than eagles and they were stronger than lions. Look at verse 24. O women of Israel, weep for Saul, for he dressed you in luxurious scarlet clothing, in garments decorated with gold. Oh, how the mighty heroes are falling in virtue. Jonathan lies dead on the hills. How I weep for you, my brother, Jonathan. Oh, how much I loved you. And your love for me was deep, deeper than the love of women. Oh, how the mighty heroes are falling, stripped of their weapons, they lie dead. I was going after the scripture that they were swifter than eagles and stronger than lions. When the Holy Ghost bid me to ask you a question today. Are you a gracious person? Are you a gracious brother? Are you a gracious sister? David was a warrior, persecuted by King Saul, rejected by King Saul, attacked by King Saul, pursued by the king named Saul. And yet when the king died, David did not do the warrior's dance. David did not rejoice, rather he wept for him. David was not giving his people high five, the victory at last. My enemy is dead. No cynical comments. No wonder Jehovah God of heaven says concerning David, the man after my own heart. I look into the scripture and God said to me, he says, son, Tell my people to begin to be gracious. Tell my people to begin to heart as the Holy Spirit is leading them. Don't seek revenge. Vengeance is the Lord's. Don't stay in bitterness. Don't store up negative stuff. And remember Jesus said it. He said, even if your enemy is thirsty, give him water. If your enemy is hungry, give him food. Leave the judgment to the most high God. When I saw this, I said, no wonder God preserved David and God preserved his throne. No wonder when he went into error, mercy was shown unto David. David recovered. I don't know the one that the Lord is sending me to this day. Leave the matter to the Most High God. Stop harboring the negativity. And Jehovah God of heaven will keep you. If you don't do that, the eyes of the Lord is going to and fro throughout the whole universe. Which means God is watching you. When your pastor is not there, God is watching you. When your husband is not there, God is watching you. When your wife is not there, God is watching you. No wonder all of David's enemies, they all perish one by one. Even before him, God showed him great mercy. We call that the sure mercies of David. The sure mercies of David. I discovered is that the race is not to the swift, neither the battle to the strong. It is of him that the Lord showeth his mercy. Ecclesiastes 9, 11b, I pray you will receive mercy from the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. But now talking about being stronger than lions in this season, when God says that your strength will be renewed, where will God say to you or say to us that we need to renew our strength? It is because of your destiny. It is because of the great assignment that God has given unto you. It is because of your dreams. And remember, we have been praying, God, we are more than this. Let there be a performance of your word in our lives. Remember, we have been praying that our spirit man will break forth. Remember, we have been praying 
that the promotion that comes from the Lord will be seen in your life. We have been praying that sickness will not stop us. We have been praying that disease will not stop us. We have been praying that we will not be distracted. And this day I pray for you. You will not be distracted. You will not be confused. And your speed will not be reduced in the name of Jesus. Why a lion? The lion is a strong animal. He does not turn away from any. The Bible calls him the king of all animals. And I don't know about you. The roaring of a lion is so loud that they used to tell us when we were kids that if a lion is around you and the lion roars, everybody, including all the animals around the place, they will go and pee or we or whatever you want to call it quickly because of the fear being emanated from the roaring of a lion. But then I check the scriptures, Psalm 104, verse 21. The Bible says the young lions do roar for their prey. What the scientists told us, when a lion roars, the prey is immobilized. The fear of the lion is communicated through his roaring. The Bible says the lions roar for their prey, stocking the food provided by God. Look at Proverbs 20 verse 2. The Bible says concerning a lion, he said, even the king's fury is like a lion's roar. You need the grace of God when you talk, when you speak. Men will give you attention. The king's fury is like a lion's roar. To rouse his anger is to risk your life. Can you see how strong a lion is? You arouse his anger. You risk your life. Equally, I discovered that the lion is a good hunter. Yes, Job declared in Job 10, 16. He says, if I hold my head high, you will hunt me like a lion. Acknowledging that a lion is a good hunter. In Proverbs 30, 30, the Bible says, the lion, the king of animals, who will not turn aside for anything. And yet the Bible says, you are serving the lion of the tribe of Judah, who is your savior, who is your captain, who is your guide, who is your redeemer, stronger than a lion. If a lion will not turn from many, if the roaring of a lion is enough to paralyze and immobilize his prey, and then you belong to the lion of the tribe of Judah, when a lion gives birth to her babies, they must look like the mother lion. The cubs must look like their mother. If truly you belong to the lion of the tribe of Judah, the time has come for you to reign. The time has come for you to rule. The time has come for you to break free and break forth. That's why God is telling us we need to renew our strength. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So why do you need to renew your strength? Number one, to prevail and become what God wants you to be in life and destiny. For you to do that, you need strength. For you to do that, you need speed. For you to do that, you need focus. For you to do that, you need the presence of the Lord. You know, there are champions and there are winners. There are people in the scriptures and contemporarily in our generation, men and women that are breaking grounds, men and women that are making progress, and you belong to that camp. You belong to that group. Who is stopping you? What is stopping you? Receive surrender from the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, there are many things that will disturb a man in order to be discouraged, in order to lose his strength, in order to move. And maybe you are like that. Issues of life, 
from your past, the people you have put your trust in, they let you down. Maybe your husband died, your wife left you, your friends have forsaken you, nobody wants you. In fact, you have lost your job, you've lost your house, you've lost everything. Or maybe even you are listening to me, you are in the prison, whether by your own fault or maybe you are not even guilty, maybe by association. You are not the only one that have been through this. There was a man in the Bible called Joshua who was born in slavery, who grew up in slavery. Eventually, God freedom, God delivered the nation of Israel. He was promoted only to become a servant to another man. So from slavery to servitude, not 10 years, not 20 years, not 30 years, not 60 years, more than 80 years. Joshua was in slavery. Joshua was a servant. Yet at the fullness of time. And I love this because you know what? God's time is always the best time. When God turns to you, it becomes your turn. That's why you cannot afford to be bitter. That's why you cannot afford to be looking around. That's why you cannot afford to be looking back and gossiping and backbiting and badmouthing others who are making it because you are yet to manifest. You will manifest in the name of Jesus. All of Joshua's trust was in his leader, Moses, the great prophet of God. That when Moses died, Joshua physically was alive, but I guess mentally he was dead. He took God to encourage him. He took God to keep on pushing him. And God told Joshua, in Joshua 1 verse 1, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. And I don't know which horse you are riding. Maybe that horse is dead. I saw an illustration one of you sent to me recently. How you need to be sensitive and you need to know what God is doing in your life. There was a bridge that was constructed somewhere in Nisha. When there was an earthquake and the river came, they constructed this massive bridge, very long. And people were using the bridge to move from one town to the other. But you know nature. The river just saying something was going on. So there was another earthquake. Houses were destroyed. Buildings were destroyed. Many things were destroyed. But this bridge was so built by, by solid engineers that nothing touched the bridge. Oh, people rejoiced. They clapped. They celebrated. But the river changed its course. Instead of going towards the bridge, the river decided to take another route completely. And the massive bridge, the beautiful bridge, is now useless. It's like people just watching a museum that this bridge used to be useful before. Are you the one the Lord is speaking to this morning? Why are you on the floor? Why are you still sorrowing? Why are you still doing what you are doing when the Holy Spirit had moved? Remember in the days of old, when the Spirit moves, people will have to move. Which horse are you riding on? Are you riding on a dead horse? Joshua was mourning, mourning for days instead of leading the people of God. Mourning for days, forgetting what Moses told him before. Mourning for days. And God had to come. And the same thing is happening right now to you. You are getting tired. You need to renew your strength. You need to renew your strength. You need to wait upon the Lord. And the waiting is enough. Gather your loins together and begin to perform. Change your skirt for the time to celebrate has come. But look at the word of the Lord in Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. I was tearing up when I was reading this. Because I've seen this in my life, I've seen likely this in your life, or in the life of others around you. And you know that we are more than this, but we are not manifesting. There is a veil, a covering going on. But this day, I remove that covering in the name of Jesus. 
So the Lord said to Joshua, and he called his saying to you, he said, be strong and courageous, for you are the one, nobody else, that will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors, I will give to them. Be strong, verse 7, be very courageous, be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything that you do. People had barmatic success in our generation. And people are running away from breaking through. But this is the word of the Lord. God wants you to be successful. God wants you to break through. God wants you to glorify him upon the surface of the earth. God is not looking for useless people. God is not looking for failures. This is the word of the Lord. God said to Joshua, be strong and very courageous. But there are principles to follow. There are laws to follow. Don't forget my instruction that I've given unto Moses that was passed on unto you. That's why we have the holy rate. That's why we have the scriptures that we are reading today. In order to search the word, to see the law, to see the commandments, to see the principles. And when we do apply such in our lives, or those who have done that, they become seriously outstanding. Your case will not be an exception in the mighty name of Jesus. In verse 8 of that scripture in Joshua chapter 1, the Bible now says, this is the secret. Study this book of instruction continually. Not just one time. Some of us will read the Bible maybe once a week. No. Study this book of instruction continually. I'm reading from New Living Translation. Meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then, when you have done this, only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is the word of the Lord. This is not my word. This is the word of Jehovah, the one who cannot lie. Our God, the same yesterday, today, and forever, the one who has not changed. Say, hey, this is the word. Obey the word. Meditate in the word. Day and night. Obey everything in it. Then you will prosper. Then you will succeed in all that you do. This is my command. Be strong. And courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, my prayer for you this day is that the Lord will be with you. The Lord will prosper you. The Lord will increase you. The Lord will make you to succeed greatly in your profession in the name of Jesus. You will be outstanding. You will bring glory to the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Please listen to me, child of God, because I can sense the unction of the Lord. I declare to you this year, and in this season, you will do exceedingly. In the name of Jesus, God of heaven, we strengthen you exceedingly. You will not fail. You will not fail. You will not faint. In the name of Jesus. There are yet more lands to conquer. There are yet more dreams and visions to accomplish. I know you've done well. And I know you are trying. I know people are still making a demand on you. But you know the whole world is waiting for your manifestations. The whole world is groaning. The whole world is in agony. And God is raising you as a Joseph. God is raising you as a champion, as a solution provider in your profession, where you work, where you dwell, in your family, in your church. The whole world is waiting for you. Isaiah 40, 31, our hand-called scripture. But those who trust in the Lord, underline that word trust, 
we find new strength, not hold strength. They will find new strength to have new beginnings. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That would be your portion in the name of Jesus. You see a lion looking at his prey and the prey is trying to run. Come on, give me a break. The king of of the animals is hungry and you happen to be a prey, what do you do? The roaring alone we immobilize the prey. But God forbid that the lion should be weak. God forbid that the lion should not have strength to run after the prey. I've seen it on geographical channels before on television where a lion gets hold, gets weak, and cannot perform his enterprise. They always die of hunger. They die of loneliness. And it's amazing. Other lions will see the lion and they will gravitate. They will move away. Please, no matter what you do, don't let the presence of the Lord depart from you. Don't let the presence of the Lord depart from you. Being holy is not a punishment. Be that holy as our God is holy. Being pure is not a form of restriction. If the Bible says don't do it, there must be a reason. Because the Bible says the soul that sins will die. That is the word of the Lord. That is not my word. That is what the Bible says. You will not die. God will not reject you. God will not forsake you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me move to the second part. The speed of an ego is highly crucial for you in life and destiny. I've seen men with an allotted time of 70 years, some 60 years, some 40 years. They don't know some 25 years. And they are wasting their own time. A young man went to be with the Lord in our local church. So busy for God, so active for God. The way he was doing his work, even in the house of the Lord, he was so focused to a young person, unknown to everybody, the clock was taken for him. You know, the heat of his departure from the planet Earth, he was still in the church till very late. Pastoring his mates, they were worshiping together, and he went home lied on his bed and went to heaven. I still remember a good friend of ours, you know, a lady, mighty evangelist, that housed my children when they were young in Nigeria. You know, she was always busy going about, calling me from different places. And I used to tell her, come on, slow down. He said, no, Pastor D, we can't. Pastor Andrew, we can't. We need to do this. We need to do that. Unknown to every one of us. The clock was ticking. She went to preach. And she was in the aircraft. And the aircraft crashed. Only to go and be with the Lord. We all need speed. We need speed. Believe me. We need speed, number one, to recover the lost ground. We need the speed of God in our lives in order to recover the lost time. And I don't know about you what the enemy has stolen from you. You need speed to quickly recover. And my prayer for you is this. This year, this season will be your season of recovery. Your year of recovery in the mighty name of Jesus. Then begin to round up this message because it's not a long one. But it's a clearing call to action. It's not a message that you want to listen to and you're relaxed. Where have you been? Where are you right now? And where are you going? The Bible said, They that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Are you really aware of who you are in destiny? Is the presence of the Lord real in your life? I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to encourage you. If you don't know all those things, the Bible says that he that is in honor and does not know it is worse than a beast. 
you will not be a beast in the name of Jesus. Let's hear the word of the prophet in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 25. This is the word of the Lord prophetically to someone today. Thus said the Lord, I will give you back what you have lost to the swarming locust, to the hopping locust, to the stripping locust, and to the cutting locust. God says you will recover swarming locusts. You know the effect of that? When you are surrounded by many things, things that are stronger than you, things that are multiplied much more than who you are, the hopping locusts from one crisis to the other. How about the stripping locusts? Men that want to strip you naked, strip you of your grace, strip you of your glory, strip you of your resources. And then the cutting locusts. After that, they use their mouth to tear you to pieces, to believe to you and whispering to you. But if you know who you are in the Lord, you will rise again. You will go back to your maker. You go back to the carpenter of heaven, the mansion builder, our God, our redeemer, our maker, our helper, who will grant you speed. When an eagle is flying, just, you know, the way the eagle slides, and within a record time, the eagle will get to where he was going. When an ego as a body is looking with the microscopic eye for many miles, the ego can locate the prey, size the prey up, and then determine with a swoop. How about the highs of your vision? May you be strengthened. May you gather speed. In this season, when we're believing God for renewed strength, May the hand of the Lord be upon you, that you will be stronger than a lion. You'll be swifter than an eagle in the name of Jesus. You will achieve incredible, glorious breakthroughs this year. I believe in you. That's why I'm in agreement with you. I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to help you. And that's why I want us to bow our heads together as we pray before Jehovah God of heaven that the power of the Most High will overshadow you, that the hand of the Lord will be magnified, that you will not run in vain, that it shall be well with you. Cry to the Lord, renew my strength. Make me to be stronger than a lion. Make me to be swifter than an eagle. And Lord, don't let me die in battle. King Saul was stronger than a lion, swifter than eagle, yet died in the battlefront. Jonathan was stronger than a lion, swifter than an eagle, and yet perished. You will not perish. Cry to the Lord. Has the Father to lay his mighty hands upon you and right now to renew your strength as you meditate in the word the word of the lord will refresh your soul the word of the lord will be your compass the word of the lord will direct you and it shall be well with you so shall it be in the name of god the father god the son and God the Holy Spirit. And the people said, Amen and Amen. May the Lord bless you.